a common misconception by a lot of people, there's no such thing as a cancer cure. Is that true? Uh, no, it's not. Uh, let me, the simple statement is that it's not true. And uh, the, uh, if we take uh, old kids that have cancer, um, about 65 to 70 percent of all of them will be cured. When we say cure, I mean five year survival rate. We're saying cure. Cure means that the disease goes away and never comes back. Um, and that occurs in a large number of uh, cases of cancer in kids. Um, the, uh, as anything else, obviously there is potentially some price, but uh, uh, as we see things now, we actually see a lot of patients with cancer who actually survive, uh, are cured, become functioning uh, normal adults, and they have minimal or no sequelae uh, of their treatment. Well, leukemia, female, today, you could say to a parent, most likely, without even seeing the kid, what's the cancer cure rate in it, most leukemias? Uh, if, for instance, for the most common leukemia in children, which is uh, uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, the cure rate is around 80% all comers, uh, meaning that if you take uh, 80, I mean 100 kids that have leukemia, um, 80 of them will survive, will become uh, adults, will have uh, what we expect to be a, a normal uh, um, life, and including children, including reasonably good. Boys have slightly less, right? Boys have slightly less. Uh, the boys are slightly less, but the difference at this point between boys and girls, uh, it's very blurred, uh, so that uh, um, the 80% figure is really the figure that applies to essentially all comers. What about lymphoma? Common lymphomas you see in children? Uh, again, the, the figures are very similar. Uh, there are some differences uh, because uh, there are a number of different uh, uh, lymphomas. But just to give you an example, uh, the so-called B-cell lymphoma, which is a, a very aggressive uh, lymphoma that uh, up until uh, uh, 15, uh, 20 years ago uh, was essentially uh, non-curable. Uh, at this point, the cure rate in that particular disease are 90% uh, uh, and higher with modern uh, therapy. So there have been some uh, really uh, incredible changes that have occurred, even simply during my career, uh, which is at this point long, but uh, not that long. And uh, um, the, the way we approach cancer, the way we can approach uh, patients, uh, pediatric patients, kids with cancer, is really different today, uh, both in terms of uh, how we deal with them and the expectation that we can offer to them and their families. Well, one of the reasons we have better results is we have a cooperative study, we share the information, we don't look at hematology, oncology, doctors, and competition, we work together as a big family, so someone makes a great stride, it's shared almost immediately, is that true? Yes, it is. I mean, uh, uh, cancer in kids is a relatively rare phenomenon, thankfully. Um, in this country, there are depending on the numbers that you look at, somewhere around seven to 8,000 new cases of all cancer in kids. Uh, so if you think about a population that is uh, nearing uh, 300 million uh, people, that's a very small number. Uh, and it's uh, definitely minuscule compared to, for instance, the numbers of cancers that occur in, uh, in adults. So that has led a long, long time ago to pediatric hematologists, oncologists to get together to say the only way we're going to learn something about this is to actually try to study essentially all or as many as uh, kids that have cancer that present in this uh, country. And so that developed into the cooperative group that is now known as the Children Oncology Group that essentially been around with a number of names for probably more than 50 years at this point. And that is essentially the reason why kids can be cured. So in other words, this is one part of medicine where doctors 
work together as a big family. It is. Uh, you know, competition is special. Yeah, but not a nice way, competition. But uh, uh, the reality is that uh, pediatric oncologists, uh, as most physicians, are obviously interested in what is best for the, the, the patient at the end of the day. And so putting together resources, putting together minds, and essentially sharing knowledge um, becomes a, a central part of how this is done. And just to give you a statistic, uh, if you take uh, all children with cancer in this country, uh, the vast majority of them actually will be treated on national protocols that are uh, part of this children oncology group, while instead uh, a very small fraction, uh, definitely less than 5%, uh, somewhere around 1%. The reason some might be put because parents are uncomfortable talking and are sharing information, is that the reason? Okay. The few are afraid to share the information about the kid? Well, these are, uh, in this day and age, um, although uh, privacy has, is a concern for everybody, uh, th these are extremely well um, guide. I mean, there are some uh, very strict guidelines on how we do this. Uh, the information that is shared generally is encoded. Uh, it's not, uh, um, the names are not shown. Um, all the process that is involved uh, um, in uh, clinical research is there is a tremendous oversight, both at the local level uh, and at the federal level, uh, so that uh, uh, this is not somebody who's uh, trying to sell snake oil in the back of a wagon. This is really a very complex and very serious machine that uh, is involved in clinical research. So it's very important people realize that if we do share the information about the kid's name, we protect the child, if someone makes strides or they find something that's not working and it's shared, we make great strides. Is that true? Absolutely. And what is even more important is that uh, there is actually evidence for that. Uh, that is, children who are treated on, uh, for cancer on national protocols do a lot better than children who are treated in places where those protocols may not be available. And the reason for that is several. One is that's generally the best possible information that is used in generating those uh, uh, protocols and is the compiled knowledge of many people who are actually expert, uh, the best expert in the area. And also, um, information flows back and forth so that the complication or a problem or something that may ensue that has not been foreseen in a particular child rapidly gets spread around the, cancer, the pediatric cancer community uh, through those protocols so that can be applied to everybody else. So it's a terrific mechanism. It's extremely important. And to be honest, is the only way, the only possible way to make progress.